Welcome everyone, Mountain Spider here for another Pokemon TCG game. We'll be jumping into some more games with Torrential Cannon deck. Uh, we are currently one loss, one win with the deck on the versus ladder. So I'm going to continue right where the last video stopped. As you can see, I am wearing the same shirt. It is not because I am a dirty degenerate. It's because this is literally a recording right off the first one. So let's jump into another game. Let's hope we can actually uh, head off with a second win. This deck is a lot of fun. Um, it is one of the older decks. Um, I think it's the fifth most recent deck, sixth most recent deck. But it is a lot of fun to play with and it does hold out relatively well on the versus ladder. Again, this Pokemon series is really aimed to be looking at the different Pokemon decks that you can get in TCG and basically showcasing them so that those of you who are watching this can see whether you want to get the deck or not before you spend your Pokemon, co uh, Pokemon points. This is unfortunately taking quite a while to actually look for an opponent. Um, so the main focus part ah, that's much quicker. The main focus behind this deck is that it has a very nice draw mechanic and it allows you to use the Blastoise Pokemon power to bring out as much energy as possible by looking at the top six cards. So we're actually playing against Laser Focus, which is one of the newer decks. I think I've played against this deck once or twice before, so I'm not entirely familiar with it, so I'm slightly worried about what's going to come out. Um, not the opening hand I want to see. I'd much prefer to be seeing a Farfetch down as my active Pokemon and a Squirt on the bench. But let's see how this goes. I am hoping I'm going to pick up the win, but I think this might be quite a tough challenge. Because the newer the deck, the tougher it tends to be to beat. Type no Smash Kick. Oh, this is going to be very difficult to deal with. This is going to be very difficult to deal with. On the back line, in K, your opponent's nasty. Okay, let's see how this goes. I've got, if I remember this deck, if I remember this deck correctly, this in K is not even used as an active Pokemon. It's just used when it evolves as a Pokemon power for siphoning out energy from your deck. Yeah, Goose, that is terrible hot. And, yeah, that's very cotty. I'm not a big fan of that Pokemon picture. Okay, there's a Psyduck. That's a bit of hope to be able to get this Golduck online a bit quicker. Okay, let's get the Pokemon Fan Club going. I definitely want to get a Farfetch'd on my bench, and I want to get a... Do I want to get a Pidgey? I don't want to get a Squirtle. Yeah, I'd rather get the Pidgey in the hopes that I've only got one left in my deck. So there must be a Pidgey in the prize card, which is not really what I want. Um, let's get this going. And I don't know if it's even worth powering up the Squirtle. Okay, we've gone in three hits. Um, I think I'll actually power up the Squirtle so next turn I can retreat into the Farfetch'd. Okay, a little bit of damage out. Sorry, this chair is really noisy. I need to get a new one very soon. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go straight into retreat, to retreating the Squirtle into the Farfetch'd, just because this this Squirtle has just no hope running up against Type Null. And there we go. There's the Malamar and Psyche Recharge. Once during your turn before your attack, you may attach an energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So this really does allow uh, for a constant stream of energy going on in my opponent's Pokemon. Um, let's go to the treat. Retreat, uh, I don't know if I want to go into Golduck just yet, but I very... Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake just going straight into Golduck, I think. Hmm. I'd rather stop that Quick Blow, just because I don't want to be taking more damage. I need Golduck to be staying there for as long as possible, hopefully getting to the stage where I can get Swim Off. Because I'm fairly certain my opponent should have another energy card in hand. And I don't want them playing Quick Blow. Again, Golduck's ability with Amnesia to just shut down your opponent's Pokemon is fantastic. This Golduck has a lot of value in this deck because it's able to shut down your opponent's Pokemon. It's able to do a lot of damage if you powered up with Swim. And on top of that, it has a one retreat cost, which is absolutely fantastic for if you're in a pinch, you can just retreat him without too much of a consequence down the line. That is very bad. Two uh, Soul Valleys down. Mm. I can't even use a copycat. Okay. 
Just keep the amnesia, uh, stopping air slash. Again, I can much rather take 30 damage to it and then 120. Now, let's see what my opponent goes for. My opponent does seem to have a very strong start. Having two stage ones down, well, three stage ones down on their field already. It is rather worrying. Hmm. I really need to hope to get some draws out very soon. Uh, once Goldak does get to the third energy, getting some out will be able to get more damage. My opponent has seen that. So they're going to start powering up their second Soul Valley instead. And the issue is that even if I knock out this Soul Valley, my opponent's Avenging Heart the next turn will knock out my Golduck. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to go for the aggressive play. I can't just sit here doing nothing. And yeah, let's go for the swim. Please don't be getting a prize card. Hopefully that prize card is not going to be the Pidgey. And it's going to be a Nest Ball. It's not the end of the world. It's not fantastic. Bit of a surprising play. I guess my opponent wants to charge up with the uh, Malamar a bit before actually committing the Silvalli. Well, I'm not sure why, because Avenging Card would have dealt 80 damage, which would have knocked out my Golduck. So I'm not sure what my opponent is stalling for, or if they just didn't see that. Otherwise, I'm just missing something completely, which is very likely, considering I don't actually know this deck. Always giving me hope, because they can just retreat with the Let's see. Yeah. They were just going for the retreat with the Ankus. Avenging Heart, that's the KO. Um, I think going into the Farfetch, just getting draws up, because at the moment I don't have anything better. Okay, there's another Farfetch again. I'm okay having Farfetch on my benches because they allow me to get. just get my, my, my momentum back. Okay, using Brock's Grit just to get my uh, deck looking good again. Let's get the Farfetch going. Let's get Nesbor getting a Psyduck out. Really wish I could bring a War Turtle out, but unfortunately, Nesbor only allows you to bring a basic out. Okay. Um, let's go for the Collect. There's Golduck. Okay, that's what I want to see. Although now I'm seeing the awkward position where I don't have energy. Uh, which is a bit strange this deck, because normally you get your Blastoise out and you're rolling an energy. Unfortunately now, these draws are not helping my energy gain. Unless gold, I can actually get, even even with Amnesia, it's going to be very, very difficult to get Silvalli down. Because of Aveng Avenging Heart. Okay, let's see what happens next. Farfetch will most likely be going out this turn. Because, because of Malamar, my opponent doesn't really have an issue using the Air Slash. Discarding an energy of my opponent doesn't really matter because they can recycle it so easily. Okay, let's really, really hope for... Not that. Hmm. Really hoping to get energy off these three draws, otherwise this was a very bad play. Okay, Tumble Ball, let's get going. Let's get a... Yes, okay, that's fantastic. Let's get a War Turtle out. Let's get a Blastoise out. Let's get this train going. Okay. Um, let's get War Turtle out. Mm, do I want to wait a turn? I actually can't afford to wait a turn. Let's get Amnesia going. This will give me a bit more time by stopping my opponent from doing Air Slash. Again, it's not saving me a lot of time, but at the moment I need as much... I need to stall as much as I can. Uh, I think that was my first timer ball, so I have one more timer ball left in my deck. If we can draw a second timer ball and hopefully get into another war to Blastoise, that'll be incredibly lucky. Mm -hmm. Draw Conto, six cards in hand. Ah, would have been great if I could have saved. Ah, there's the Necromon. Necroza. Uh, Crozma, sorry. Very attack. During your opponent's next turn, Pokemon takes very less damage. Eesh. And a special laser, if this Pokemon has any special energy attached to it, this attack does 60 more damage. So I need to save my Blastoise for Necroza. Hmm. Almost like being a second Necroza for coming out. I think Malamar, oh, it makes sense to keep the energy going. My opponent does still have two energy cards. 
a two psychic energy cards left in their discard pile. Okay, Avenging Hearth, that's not the end of the world. Okay, the nice thing is now I'm going to be able to get Swim out. And I don't know if I want to Swim. The Swim won't take out Savali. Now I'm not sure if I'm more scared of Savali or if I'm more scared of the Necrozma. And I'm think, I think they're both pretty scary. Golduck just doesn't take them out, that's the issue. What I might do is actually stall one more turn. I think I'm going to rather charge up Blastoise. I'm going to stall out. I'm not going to use Swim just yet. I hope this is the right place. The logic behind this is I want to stall out one more turn because I wanted to make sure my Blastoise actually had enough energy. And if I can stall out one more turn, now if I use Swim, I can KO this Soul Valley, which at least one problem gone. I know Necrozma is going to be an issue next turn regardless. Um, it's just whether now my opponent's going to retreat the Soul Valley or not. Let's see what happens. Oof, the opponent's deck, this laser deck is able to just bring out so much energy. So I'm, and allows my opponent to carry on using Air Slash, which is quite scary. Now, uh, here comes the thing. Is my opponent going to be going for... Okay, Avenging Heart, which gives me a bit more time. That's good, because it allows it allows me to do better trades. Let's get this energy down. Okay, let's go. Powerful Squall. Okay, two energy down. Um, I might want to actually charge up my... The thing is, it does actually help charging up the Pidgey. So we charge up our Psyduck with the hope of getting another Golduck out. Now let's KO the Soul Valley. Oh, I couldn't actually hit Necrozma on the bench. Uh, my opponent doesn't have a water energy attached to it. Sorry, I'm sorry for mistake, for those of you complaining about it. Okay, that is a Blastoise. That is a fantastic draw. Now all I need to get is the War Turtle out, and I can have my second Squirtle online. That'll be a lot of value if we can get that going. The problem is my opponent has a very, very strong bench. Their bench is a lot stronger than what I have at the moment. And my opponent can just retreat into this um, Malamar. And Malamar will unfortunately KO Golduck. And then if I KO Malamar, my opponent can bring in Necrozma and KO Blastoise. And then I'm out. Then I'm out of options. Right, let's go for the retreat. I'd rather have gone for this retreat to have energy when just got out in case my opponent needs to use it. So unfortunately my opponent is up on energy at the moment. This is quite a tough first game for this deck. Well, third game for this deck, but first game for this video. Switch is not what I want to be seeing right now. Let's go for powerful squall. Okay. There's the War Turtle. I really, really need to draw into this War Turtle. Okay. Let's get these. Let's get one onto Psyduck. Let's get one onto Squirtle. And let's go into the Hydro Tackle. Unfortunately, I know I'm going to be going down next turn. Regardless, which is unfortunate, but I can't afford to store this game up much longer. Because my opponent's able to get so much value out on their, on their bench. Um... Necrozma is going to knock out Blastoise, and I don't really have an answer for this just yet. I can't actually remember if I'm running a second Golduck. There's only one Golduck in this deck. Hey, they finally got their um, Gumshoes out. I learned Headbutt. For your opponents, active Pokemon is a Pokemon GX or Pokemon EX. This attack's base damage is 30. I really wish it was the other way around. But anyway. I. I don't think we can walk away from this game if we don't unfortunately. My opponent has the momentum. Yeah, let's go for the Psyduck. Again, really, really hoping for a Golduck draw. That is probably the worst draw I could have. So, what I'm going to go do is go into Farfetch'd. 
Let's do a switch into Farfetch'd, and let's get some draw mechanics going. Because right now... Nope, that's game. I basically needed to draw into a War Total. Although even drawing into a War Total would be game next turn. So, for my opponent well played, and unfortunately this is going to be the end of the game. I don't have a comeback for this though, I would get the Necrozmas online too quickly. This laser deck really is a lot of fun. Uh, if you've got 500 Poké Points, I'd highly suggest picking it up. It is a lot of fun to play with, and you're able to get your momentum going quickly. If you're able to get a Malamar out nice and early, you pretty much sort for energy. And the nice thing is that if you go to the deck, they've got Mysterious Treasure, which a which now uh, I can't even talk, which allows you to get the Necrozma out very very quickly. Uh, let's go to the Psyduck. Let's see, maybe I can get a Golduck out. Let's see, and nope, that is nothing. So let's just end the turn here. Fortunately, there's nothing I can do from that. Um, yeah, my opponent knows they got that in the bag. I'm sure it's been quite obvious the last like three turns or so, but at least they're an nice opponent. So send them the love, the plot back. So unfortunately, pick up a, a loss the first game in this deck uh, in this video. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, everyone. Okay, unfortunately, that's going to be a loss. Let's hope our second game can be a bit better. Okay. So I'll jump straight into a second game. Again, most likely going to only be doing two games for this video. Um, that'll be our fourth game with the Torrential Cannon deck. I'll most likely make one more video with this deck. Uh, I enjoy doing about three or four videos with each deck. I am quite eager, again, going into another laser deck. Unfortunately, you do end up running into the two most recent decks quite often on the ladder. Um, I am quite keen to pick up one of the newer decks. Um, just to pick up something new, because I have played with Torrential Cannon a few times. Um, this is quite a nice start though. Okay, and my opponent doesn't have anything, so I'm going to have an even better card advantage. So this is looking quite hopeful so far. Um, so I can go and turn one Nest Ball into a uh, Squirtle. Turn two I can get Golduck and Wartle to evolve forms out. And whilst I'm doing all of this, I'm getting Collects off of Farfetch'd. So this start does have quite a lot of momentum which is quite good to see, and I'm getting a draw out because my opponent mulliganed. I do wish that you had similar mulligan rules to Magic the, Magic the Gathering, where if you've got a bad hand you can still mulligan, uh, whereas in Pokemon you can only mulligan if you have no basic Pokemon, which can be frustrating because often you can sit with very very bad, uh, sit with a very very bad opening hand, and unfortunately you can't mulligan it because you have one basic Pokemon. And okay, so this is quite a good start. And go. I don't want to play Professor this turn because I'm not actually getting any damage out. I forgot that I have first turn. <laughs> I was about to go straight for the collect. Okay, let's see what happens. Um, hoping my hoping my opponent can't get an early evolve off. If they do, it's a bit worrying. Um, but again, if Farfetch goes down, it's not really the end of the world. I'm not too concerned with that. My opponent has the Necrozmus going off very early. Uh, that laser deck, ha you're basically guaranteed to see you in a Krozma during the game. Um, there's the third one. It has a lot of fetch mechanics. You you should see you in a Krozma every single game. My opponent's got a very good start there. Hmm. Okay, this is very nice. Uh, I can go turn three Blastoise, which is really what you want to be seeing with this deck. What I think I might be doing is actually going for a retreat. Let's bring out the Golduck at this stage. So I can use Amnesia. I want to use Professor to get Amnesia doing more damage. There's a Pidgey, which is what I want to see. So I can get some draw mechanics down the line. Let's get Amnesia off. Let's stop the big damage from going off. So let's stop Quick Blow. Okay, this is a very nice start because I can get Blastoise off in turn 3, which is the perfect scenario. I mean, I couldn't ask for better draws. There isn't actually a way to get them off any quicker. Um, and I'm already sitting with a Golduck down in the field, which will hopefully be doing Swim next turn. Okay, you turn board, what does that do again? The 3 cost of the Pokemon on this card is 
one less if this card is discarded from play, put it back in your hand. Okay, so basically my opponent's Pokemon are going to cost one less, or the withdrawal cost. So the Necrozma is down to one retreat. Ah, getting rid of Amnesia, that's unfortunate. And only a one retreat cost. So I'm most likely only seeing an Air Stash come through now. Oh, my opponent didn't actually have any, any energy. That is quite unfortunate for them, because now I can go into War Total. I can use Powerful Squall. That's the two energy I needed. Let's get two energy down onto Golduck. And I can use the energy in my hand to start powering up Blastoise. And now I can go for Swim. Which, luckily for me, thanks to playing Professor last turn, is going to look knock out the Soul Valley. Which will give me prize card advantage. Now, next turn, unfortunately, Necrozma will... Oh, the weaker Necrozma is coming in. I guess it doesn't really matter because they can charge up from the discard power anyway. I really hope you guys can't hear my fan from my laptop. It's going a bit crazy at the moment. Um, not sure why. Okay, let's see what happens. I hope my Gorda can hang on this turn. Um, let's see. Barrier attack, I should still be alive. I should... Unfortunately, I can't. If my opponent does go for barrier attack, I can't even go into the amnesia. It's not going to do anything. No attack out. My opponent's star for energy. That's very unfortunate for them. Okay, I can't use Brock's grit just yet. So let's go for another powerful squall. Another two energy. I'm not complaining. The more energy I can siphon out of my deck, the better. Okay. I have another energy in hand, so I can power up Blastoise, so I'm not really worried about that. Grit I don't want to do yet, so let's go for the swim. Let's get as much damage off as possible. I'm rather scared of my opponent's deck, considering how badly we lost in the last game. Oh wow, it actually runs Nordino. Once you can turn before you attack this card as your active Pokemon, you may draw a card. So our opponent's is basically stalling for energy. That's very clever because by doing that now my opponent can use this energy and get three energies off of that close my Or spread it out. Do they have another energy? No, they don't. So my opponent's gonna be hoping for a draw. Okay, yeah, let's see if they drew any energy. Okay, so Malamar. So basically if my opponent can just get enough energy in their discard pile, they'll be sort of energy. So I need to keep this pressure on for as long as possible. Um, I've got the advantage at the moment by having enough damage on the field to uh, knock out his Pokemon. It is going to get a bit scary from next turn. But let's just keep this going. The longer I can keep this pressure on, the better. Okay, I'm two prize cards ahead now. There's the second Blastoise. That's very good to see. So if I can get the second squad on Water out, they'll be that much better. For those of you who haven't seen yet, the new Pokemon phone game is out, Pokemon Masters. It is a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it. I do have some videos on my channel showcasing it. Uh, it does have a very nice feel back to Final Fantasy. It play The battle system is 3 on 3 real time. So it's no longer turn based, well not no longer, but it is not turn based because it is a spin off, it's not part of the main series. So the battle system is not turn based, which makes it very very interesting. Oh, I'm alive with 10 HP. Which makes it very interesting because it applies a lot of pressure onto you as a player. Because you can't just sit back and really take your time to think out about your moves. There's no more energies left. That's actually very good. You're then constantly forced to play. And that does make for a lot more pressure. Because you can't sit back and think what's the best, what's the best, what's the best to do. You've got to act in the moment. And one difference they made with Pokemon Masters is that your Pokemon only have one weakness. So in that sense, it's a lot more similar to the TCG game that we're busy playing right now, rather than the mainstream games. If you look at the mainstream games, your Pokemon can have two weaknesses, can have three weaknesses. Whereas here, you only have one weakness. So it does take a bit of getting used to. Um, for instance, seeing a water type Pokemon down in the field, and they might only be weak to lightning, or might only be weak to grass. And it is refreshing. I do like it. And the visuals are fantastic. The voiceovers are something they put a lot of effort into, and 
it makes it very interesting playing through the game. Okay. Uh, Hydro Attack was just not going to take out Necrozma. Which is quite unfortunate. Okay, let's see what my next draw is. That is not what I want to see, but I can get Brock's Grit out. And let's get all of those knockouts right back into my deck. And now with Powerful Squall, I can hopefully get some draws going. Get some of the NG back into my hand. I'm really hoping for another War Turtle. Um, or a Pidgeotto. Because Blastoise is not long for this world. Okay, let's go. Hydro Tackle. Water is not going to knock out Necrozma. I am still going to be alive unless he is able to drop a special energy down onto Necrozma. Let's see what happens. But yes, um, back on the topic of Pokemon Masters. If you haven't downloaded it yet, I would highly suggest it. It is a lot of fun. Um, there are launch events happening at the moment, so if you are on the fence whether you wanted to get the game or not, now is a very good time to actually pick it up. Okay, that is what I want to see. Let's get airmail off. Um, I don't think Copycat's going to have too much value in this game, so I'd rather go for Cynthia for late game, in case I need to uh, redraw my hands. Okay, I think most of my energy is actually on the board already. Uh, let's just charge up the Farfetch in case I need to draw later on down the line. I'm mainly doing it now for the shuffling and just the cycling and actually charging the Pokemon because I've got these two Pokemon to my bench. Fully charged up and ready to go. Um, I am really, really hoping to draw into a War Turtle though. Because Blastoise is not long for this world and even bringing in this Pidgeot next turn, Pidgeot doesn't deal that much damage. So. Fortunately, Blastoise will be going down here. Um, let's see what happens. I did get lucky this game with my opponent being uh, energy starved. Unfortunately, it does happen, and it's not nice winning off that way. But my opponent having two Malamars down the field, they're able to bring back any energy that goes down in the discard pile. So now we're at the stage of the game where I'm going to find it very difficult to actually close it because my opponent can just constantly bring out the Psychic Recharge. So what I was going to try and do was actually use uh, Spin Storm to get rid of this, and my opponent would then bring in Malamar. Um, but even doing so, it's not that useful because Malamar is going to be dealing a lot of damage next turn. And I need to be getting damage off. Although at the moment, I think I might rather stall for the War Turtle. Hmm, let's get the Pidgeot down. I'm so, so tempted to use Cynthia, but I can't afford losing Blastoise. Now, the question is whether I want to go for Whirlwind, which will knock this back down, and at least deal 60 damage to it, or if I want to go for Spin Storm, which will get rid of this, and return everything back to their hand. I need to stall. I don't actually need to get damage off. I just need to stall this game out as long as possible. So I need to stall base control with a draw war total. I need the second blast always down to actually do anything. Um, how many energy to most have they just got fire? I think they got one. No, they used up both last time. That is special energy. Okay, it's got no weakness. That's not the end of the world. I was worried it was the double energy. Um, let's see what happens. Um, they don't have any energy to discard power. But what they can do is they can retreat, which will put two energies down, which will be able to charge up the type null again when it evolves next turn. Okay, this is not terrible. So I'm most likely go for the whirlwind here. I know that's going to give my opponent a free stop in, but either way, my opponent's going to get a free stop in next turn. Um, I think whirlwind is still better. Because returning Ordino to my opponent's hand doesn't actually do anything. Let's get Fan Club out just to get rid of some Pokemon. Uh, let's. 
Okay, I do have a wall total in my deck. I need to draw this card. Fortune still have like a 1 in 30 chance of drawing it, which is a serious problem. Okay, let's bring those out. For the second side, like, luckily I am two two prize cards up. Oh, I'm so tempted to use Cynthia, but I can't afford it. The risk is just too great. Um, let's charge up the side up just in case. And let's go for a whirlwind. So if my Pidgeot does go down, I can bring in the Farfetch'd just to stall the game and get some draws out. I should have actually probably retreated Pidgeot. Well, I can't retreat Pidgeot now, because Pidgeot's on the sweet sweet 130, so I'll have 10 HP left. I can retreat Pidgeot, bring in the Farfetch'd, and Farfetch'd can get some draw mechanics going, and hopefully I can get into the War Portal then. Done the fast turn rather than the damage off on Ordino. Okay, again, let's just get rid of cards. Okay, let's go for the treat. Again, I'm just trying to stall out because unfortunately I'm not going to be able to knock out this Silver Valley easily. So I'll try and stall for as much time as I can. Hopefully, drawing into a wall to draw. Okay, Golduck's not a bad draw. It's not bad at all, because again, I can use the Swim, the Swim, the Amnesia to store down. Because unfortunately, Swim, it's going to take too long to charge up the Psyduck. I'm going to try, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get a Swim off. If I do manage to get Swim off, then I'll be able to knock out the Silver Valley. This laser deck is very difficult to play against. Yep, they have so much momentum. Should have done this Farfish play last turn. Oh well. That is a nice thing. Now all of you watching my mistakes can hopefully learn from it. So let's bring in Psyduck. I am still one prize card up on my opponent, which at this stage is a serious relief. Gives me a little bit of breathing room. Although my opponent's bench is still looking a lot stronger than mine's looking right now. So even if I do manage to knock out the Soul Valley, I still need one more KO. That is not going to be an easy feat. So let's bring in Psyduck. Okay. Um, let's get Golduck going. I want to use Brock's Grit to bring back... In all honesty, I think I just want to bring back... Shuffle 6 in any combination. Oh, I can't just... I was hoping to just bring back... I actually don't want Farfetch'd, and I don't want Squirtle. They don't have any value left, I'd rather bring back Energies. Okay. I've got two War Totals now in my deck, so I've got a 1 14 chance of drawing it. I really hope I draw it. Okay, let's slow this game down now with the Gold Duck a bit. Let's get some Amnesias off. Plus, if I can get three, no, if I can get four Amnesias off, I can then stop. Uh, I can knock out the Soul Valley on the next turn with Pidgeot coming in. Okay, let's see what happens next. <laughs> Sorry, this video is actually dragging out quite a bit longer than I thought it would. Um, this game really is ending up being ending into a stall war. Stall war until we can see who can actually come out on top. As it stands right now, I think my opponent's got this game. Because I still need two turns to get the Blastoise out. Okay. We'll be getting more damage off with Avenging. Oh no, sorry, Avenging Heart does less damage. This will be a two hit KO with Golduck. And my opponent needs to carry on retreating. My, my opponent has so much mobility, and they can constantly retreat because as soon as they retreat, they can put the energy back on with Malamar. Which is very irritating, because it doesn't actually matter what I do. They're basically spreading my damage across all their Pokemon. And switch back in. Oh, the switch back in to get rid of the Amnesia. I keep forgetting about that. Okay. That does give me Waterfall, which is not enough damage. But that being said, it's more damage.
do they have another switch in their hand? Because I don't have another switch, I can actually do Amnesia right now. If I do Amnesia, I won't be able to be knocked out next turn. But if my opponent has another switch, I'm dead. I'm going to bank my opponent not having another switch. Let's see. I really need to play for time. I've got 27 cards left in my deck, so I've got about a 1 in 13 chance of drawing a war total. Ah. Uh, that is not what I want to see. That's me dead then. That's unfortunate. I think that's not a game. I should have gone for the waterfall. For the storm, not the waterfall. Oh, that's a very good play on my opponent's side. That takes him to the Switch with your active Pokemon on your bench Pokemon. Very good play. Because now I'm, I'm running out of time for getting uh, Blastoise online. There's the War Turtle. Okay. So, I've got a chance. Slim as it may be, I've got a chance. So let's go for the... Get a KO on that either way. I'm... Although I'm dead, whatever play he plays next. So I may as well go for the Whirlwind. And hopefully just blast away to take this game. Silver Valley can't O hit KO last of this. Lorca and Malamon. I might be in luck. Did I take up both our bonus Necrozmas? I took up both Necrozmas early. Wow, this is a hard game. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm glad everyone's going to see a very difficult game with us. And actually seeing that both these decks played out to their full. Um, we've both done, my opponent's down to 14 minutes, I'm down to 17 minutes on my timers. So, we're basically playing this down to the wire. Um, okay. Let's bring in War Turtle. My opponent's down to one prize card. If this War Turtle goes down, a fifth Blast Toys goes down this game. I'm gonna go for Powerful Squall just because I don't see why not. I might just get lucky and get another Squirtle out. Or another Blastoise out. Okay, let's go for... Oh, he actually went for the Yield! That was a very tough game. Well, I hope all of you enjoyed that. That was a very tough game. We are two wins? That's two wins. Anyway, regardless. Um, I think we're cutting this video short, that was a very, well, cutting this video here, that ended up being a very long battle. I hope you did enjoy watching it, a very stressful way to end off the video, but I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, I'm sitting on enough Poke Points to buy a new deck, so please do let me know what deck you want to be seeing. Um, if there are no comments, I'll most likely be going into the uh, laser focus deck, it does seem quite good. Although that being said, the Soaring Storm is quite interesting. So I might look at these two decks offline, see which one I prefer, maybe roll a die, and see what deck I pick up next. And that deck will be the next deck showcased in this game series. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider liking and subscribing. It really does help me out. And it helps me grow the channel and bring you more content. And leave those comments down below, engage the channel, let me know what you want so I can bring you the content you want to see. Thanks for watching everyone. Cheers. Enjoy.